It's Aaron, and today we're going to do something a little bit different from what I usually do on this channel. Today I'm actually working with a uh, number of people within my community to actually feed a few families who need some free food. Uh, the times are obviously getting very tough and uh, a lot of people need some help. So uh, I've been working with a few people within my community that I've been contacting over the last couple of uh, months or so during COVID summer. Uh, and we got together a whole lot of uh, groceries that we're going to be delivering out to people who need them. Uh, I've been talking to uh, friends, neighbors, colleagues, uh, co-workers, that sort of thing. Um, and uh, they have done an incredible job of getting together a lot of different things. So we're still waiting on a few donations that sort of thing from uh, other people within the community uh, but right now we do have a bit of a haul and I'll show you exactly what uh, we have so far but before I do I just want to talk a little bit about how important it is to get there and to get out there and actually talk to your family your friends your neighbors your co-workers your colleagues all of that sort of thing I know a lot of people have heard me say this so many times before but it's important to say again and also I have dogs circling me at the moment like crazy, so that's probably what all the uh, background noise is. It is so important to actually talk to your family, your friends, your neighbors, your colleagues, your comrades, all of those people, because when you do, what you are doing is forming alliances and forming basically organizations that can help people in the long run. Uh, when I talk about building dual power structures, this is exactly what I mean. If you're able to go out there and you're able to talk to people that are within your local community and get them together towards uh, working towards a cause, then that's going to be an amazing thing. So anyway, uh, let's take a look at some of the stuff that we got and uh, yeah. Okay, so as you can see, we have several large bags of groceries here. We got a lot of cereals, we got a lot of breads, uh, a couple of snack food items, potato chips, cookies, not a whole lot, but stuff that kids can uh, have in their lunches and that sort of thing if they need them. Uh, like I said, we got a lot of bread, communists and uh, anarchists always coming with a whole lot of bread. Um, obviously, we got a lot of uh, fruits, potatoes, uh, apples, pears, um, a lot of other things like that. Again, there is cookies, there are snacks. Nobody's perfect. Um, we also got some jams, jellies, uh, lots of good canned goods, fresh baked uh, banana bread made by people in the community, which is absolutely fantastic. Um, and we have a lot of other things too. Uh, like I said, cereals. A lot of, some of these bags are made up already and they kind of have the same sort of thing in them. Others have to still be divided up um, and that sort of thing. We actually had such a large demand uh, for groceries that we just our small group of just a few people uh, We hadn't we weren't able in the short amount of time to actually keep up with the large demand so um, It's awesome that the people were able to get together and give us what they have and Hopefully we'll able uh, we'll be able to feed a few people who need some uh, who need some food and do some real work within the community. Hey, it's Aaron again, and today we're going to be delivering all of the groceries uh, that the community got together uh, to several different families. And one of the things that we were taking into consideration uh, is need, because that you know that's an important thing. Certain people are going to have much larger need than other people. Uh, so when we were uh, making up a lot of these um, bags down here, we just have a few that are made up down here. Uh, so far, uh, we were taking into consideration the size of the people's families, uh, how many kids there were, if there were kids, if there were elders, uh, they would get different things, right? So if there are elders, they would get things like, you, you know, staples, onions, uh, coffee, uh, packages, cigarettes, rum. I'm just kidding. Those two weren't actually things. Uh, but they would get like more adult things. And then the kids would get like, you know, uh, some snacks and that sort of thing because there are birthday parties coming up and all of those sorts of things. So that's all taken into consideration. And then, of course, there are uh, other people as well, like single individuals. Uh, there are, uh, is uh, one person that's a uh, single individual on permanent disability um, and their need is going to be a little bit less than somebody that's going to be a family of five or ten or whatever it is so uh, yeah so when you're going and delivering uh, meals if that's something that you uh, want to do in your future a good idea is to get a little bit of a rapport with the people that you're delivering them to so you actually know what they need and how to uh, fix uh, their individual problem or help them out in uh, their own individual way so we're going to be taking off in a few minutes here once we get all the rest of the bags packed up and we're going to go on a bit of a road trip we're going to deliver some food uh, to some people who need it and uh, you know maybe we'll talk a little bit about some of it along the way
Okay, so who are we delivering to now? Uh, so we're delivering to a single man who's on disability. Okay, okay, perfect. Why are you crying? <laughs> oh my goodness. I'm covered in dog hair. Alright. Let's go deliver some food. Through the best of times, through the worst of times, through mixing and through push. Oh, those uh, propaganda posters are right there. Oh, cool. We're gonna be putting up some posters later as well, but we can't really show the posters because, uh, well, that might dox us a little bit. And now we are entering the inner city reserve. Uh, like we've said many times before, the native population is treated absolutely horrendously. Uh, in these areas so with uh, residential schools I mean I just put down my camera I don't want to catch anybody's faces here obviously yeah so in an ec economically depressed area an even more economically depressed area exists uh, as a bit of an enclave of uh, poverty within the uh, you know rest of the impoverished city itself so I think that's why it's a good thing that we're out here we're trying to help people we're trying to donate some food we're trying to do whatever we can uh, because this is not just something that's happening in my area this is something that's happening all across uh, the entire country and really the entire world right now so that's why it makes it so important uh, for us to be out there doing this kind of action um, doing direct action, actually getting involved in your communities and doing whatever you can to uh, help people however you can because we are the change that we want to see and we're the only ones that are going to be here that are going to save us. We can't wait around for politicians to come and do anything. We know that their uh, our best interests are not in their mind um, but we can save ourselves and that's what we want to do and we want to do that every single day. Cause baby, I'm an anarchist, you're a spineless liberal We march together for the eight hour day Get our hands in the streets of Seattle When it came dark, the door breaks through that song I swear if you left me all alone All alone It's gonna take us a minute before we actually get to where we need to go, so I wanna uh, take a moment to talk a little bit about how we got some of this food. Uh, a lot of it was donated from uh, friends and neighbors, that sort of thing within the community. Um, but another thing that we did as well is that uh, we have been getting or uh, a certain amount of groceries and that sort of thing from the food bank for ourselves. 
Uh, and we constantly get things that a lot of people wouldn't use, like big bags of raisins or uh, uh, wh whatever, like prunes or just you know, oatmeal, that sort of thing. Like the, the kind of stuff that some people use, but most people just, it sits in your cupboard and, and it just like, uh, you know, goes bad. Nobody ever uses it for anything. So what we did is we actually got uh, a chef to get together and uh, um, make up a whole bunch of baked goods and soups and that sort of thing. So uh, we're also giving out a few things that we made uh, as well with uh, a lot of free food that we ended up getting that were that was going to go to us or to other people uh, but we wanted to do it up that way we had an abundance we also know somebody that works at a, at, at a grocery store it's really important that you get to know people that work at grocery stores because if uh, you're able to get in with somebody that works there they throw out an incredible amount of food every single day and uh, if you're able to get even a small fraction of that it's a really huge uh, really important thing to do so yeah uh, that's how we got some of the food that we're going to be delivering out today and that sort of thing. Oh my goodness, I'm already sweaty and just gross. It's hot out here. Anyway. Okay, so we're coming down to the last couple of bags in the back seat there, and uh, I just want to say that if you're part of a Food Not Bombs group, or you're part of a group that goes out and helps people and feeds people every single day, obviously doing it like this isn't necessarily uh, the most efficient way possible. There are much more efficient ways to do it, uh, like setting up a station and having people come to you, feeding uh, everybody a certain amount of soup or sandwiches or whatever it is. There's a lot of different ways to do this sort of thing, and that wasn't really the point of this uh, specific task. Task. What we're trying to do here is we're trying to give some uh, uh, well-deserved groceries to people who really need it uh, and we're doing it in a small scale kind of way um, and we're trying to do it as a way to kind of unite our community and get us together doing something that actually helps people in real life. So. Um, even though that this might not be the most efficient way, I'm sure there are a hundred different ways that you could do this uh, to get tons and tons and tons of food to people, to so many more people. Uh, but this is the little con contribution that we have uh, that we're going to be doing today. And like I said a few minutes ago, um, or if it doesn't make it, make it into the video, I guess I'll say it now. Uh, we're also going to be putting up agitprop posters as well uh, and uh, directing people back towards certain groups that we think are really useful. Anyway, so we're going to be putting up agitprop posters and some of these posters uh, lead back to um, IWW groups. Some of these posters lead back to different organizations uh, that we think are useful. And then that way, we're not just putting up posters that are stating a message. We're also directing people uh, to doing actual real uh, things like joining organizations or at least looking up these organizations and finding out a little bit about them. So yeah, like I said, we're going to be delivering these last uh, couple of bags that you can see in the back there uh, to the uh, last few families. And before I go, I just want to say thank you very much for watching. My name is Aaron. Like I said uh, in uh, the previous video, or if this makes it into the same video, uh, you can definitely uh, donate to our little group that we're trying to uh, start here and trying to help people out with. There will be a download link in the description box below and probably in the card at the end of this video. And um, yeah, make sure you subscribe because they're unsubscribing people every single day. And uh, hit the little bell button because they're not going to tell you when I release a new video. So thank you very much for watching. Have a nice day. Oh, and I also forgot to mention, I do have a Patreon. Um, this channel is uh, exclusively anti-capitalist content, so I rarely get advertisers uh, even allowing my show to be monetized, let alone actually getting sponsorships or anything like that. So any of the content that I'm creating is coming directly from you wonderful people that are uh, donating to my Patreon. So if you do get a chance, please subscribe to my Patreon, uh, donate if you can, and if you can't, thank you very much for watching. Peace. I feel like we're riding in the Antifa bus, like that 1999 song from the Venga Boys, the Venga bus. The Venga bus is coming and everybody's jumping from New York to San Francisco, the inner city disco, the city of candy. Jesus. And everybody's jumping, 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 jumping. <laughs> Ha <laughs> <laughs>